Hi, everybody. My name is Jason Fraser. I am a meteorologist with the NBC affiliate here in Cleveland, Ohio. And today we're going to be discussing thunderstorms. But as always, I like to start off with a joke, and here's today's joke. So what is the difference between a horse and the weather? Hmm, here we go. So the difference between a horse and a weather is one can be rained up and the other rains down. Get it? Okay, listen, I thought that that was what else. As always, I love your weather questions. You can feel free to leave a comment right below this video, or you can email me at J-F-R-A-Z-E-R at WKYC.com, and I will try to get to your question as quickly as possible. So for today, we're going to be discussing thunderstorms. What are they, and what are the different types, and what makes some of them a little bit more dangerous than others? So before we get started talking about thunderstorms, we need to talk about cloud types, because some clouds do cause thunderstorms, and other so this might be a little bit of a review for some of you, and for others, this might be something that you're going to learn today. So first, I'm only going to talk about the generic cloud families. There are very specific clouds, and this lesson is only going to stay generic. We're not going to talk specifically about clouds, but we're just going to talk a little bit about the cloud families. So there's cumulus clouds, stratus clouds, and cirrus clouds. Cumulus clouds, those are actually my favorite. Those are those big, puffy looking ones. And it's really fun to sit at the beach and kind of look up and say, ooh, doesn't that look like, I don't know, The Simpsons or something. Uh, then we have stratus clouds. Those are those widespread gray looking clouds. They usually are associated with bad weather, with rain showers. And then we have cirrus clouds. They are those thin, uh, wispy looking clouds. They're like really high up in the sky. They almost look like the string cheese from the mozzarella sticks. So these are an example of cumulus clouds. And usually with thunderstorms, usually we see thunderstorms with some form of cumulus clouds. Now, it doesn't mean that we can't see them with other cloud types, but usually they're in cumulus clouds. This is an, ex an example of cirrus clouds. They're usually high in the sky. They don't really, they're not usually not really associated with any moisture. Sometimes you can see even a rainbow if you see some of these clouds. And these are the stratus clouds that I was talking about. Usually they're only associated with rain showers. Every now and then you'll hear of a thunderstorm as a result of a stratus cloud, but usually it's associated with cumulus clouds. So let's review a little bit about what a thunderstorm is. Basically all a thunderstorm is, is it's a rain shower where you hear the thunder and you see lightning, all right? And this happens for a variety of reasons, but we still don't know exactly what causes thunderstorms. We have a couple of theories that are out regarding updrafts and downdrafts and the ability for liquid to basically form within these updrafts and downdrafts. What ends up happening is you have either hail or some ice pellets that form. And at some point, what happens in between those updrafts and downdrafts, updrafts is when you have those really, 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 really strong amounts of air that's pushed upward, downdrafts, or the reverse, where they're pushed downward. At some point, they actually start doing this. And as a result, there's actually electricity that's created from that. And we are what we call in the meteorology community, a charge separation where you have positives on one side of the cloud and then you have negative uh, things on the opposite side. So right now on average, there are about 2000 thunderstorms that are happening across the earth. The state in the United States that's associated with the most thunderstorms is Florida and that is because of its location. But in the world, Venezuela is actually a place where you will see more thunderstorms than any part of the world. I think I saw some place where they get on average more than 150 thunderstorms throughout the year. So that's basically one thunderstorm every two days. Don't quote me on that, but that's about average from what I was reading. Now, thunderstorms tend to happen during the spring and summer months, 
And that's because that's generally when we see a lot of heating very, very, very high up in the sky. Now that doesn't mean that we can't have thunderstorms during the winter. We can have something called thunder snow, which is really cool to see. It's basically a thunderstorm, but instead of rain, you get snow. Uh, but usually for the most part, we see thunderstorms during the spring and summer months. So there are a variety of different types of thunderstorms. Not all thunderstorms are the same, and some of them behave a little bit differently than others. So the first thunderstorm I'm going to discuss today is something called a single cell thunderstorm. All right. And what happens is it's basically a very small thunderstorm. Sometimes you may just see just a rain cloud and then it's like one little thunderstorm and it's like right there and it's not really doing anything it's all alone all right those usually only last about an hour max and many times you'll see some heavy rain showers under the thunderstorm all right they are for the most part i won't say that they're harmless but they're not going to do a lot of damage then we have what we call multi-cell thunderstorms this is when we start getting a little bit more dangerous, right? Because what happens is instead of it just being one thunderstorm, there's usually a couple of thunderstorms and they're usually kind of acting as a family and they're all kind of like near each other, all right? So one thunderstorm actually will help another thunderstorm retain its life. It's actually pretty cool to see. Now, some of these multi-cell thunderstorms can actually last for several hours. Why? Because they're basically helping one another retain life. And some of these multi-cell thunderstorms, they can produce hail along with strong winds, what we call flash flooding. And that's basically where literally in a couple of minutes, you can go from a place not having any rain or any flooding to flooding, to where you see lots and lots of water. Uh, they can also, uh, spawn off a tornado as well. We can actually see multi-cells create thunderstorms and that's all because of the wind. Now, remember in a previous lesson, I had talked about the wind and how tornadoes form, all right? Now, I know some of you think it's basically cold air and warm air, they don't really like each other, they come together, that's part of it. The other part of it is when you have a turning of the wind with height, right? So what I mean by that is at this level right here, it's going from east to west, but then you get to another level, maybe a thousand feet up in the air. It's instead moving from southwest to northeast. And when we have that turning of the winds, it's usually when we start to see some of that rotation. And that happens in multi-cell thunderstorms, again, because of those updrafts, that air being pushed way up high, and those downdrafts where the air is actually coming. One of the other types of thunderstorms is something that we call a squall line, all right? Now, these can get really dangerous very quickly. A lot of times when you're watching myself or somebody else that's on the news, we will look for these squall lines. And the reason why is because usually right along the front portion of the storm, right here, is usually where the most dangerous weather is. It's right in front of there, all right? And that's usually where we start to see the strongest winds. Uh, there's also the greatest risk at seeing what we call straight line winds. And basically what happens is that wind is, instead of it moving all around like this, all right? You know what, let me just change the uh, color of my little thing here. Instead of the wind maybe doing this or this, it instead moves just like this in front. And when you get a huge gust of wind that's moving in one particular direction, it can make things incredibly dangerous. Now, again, these thunderstorms, instead of acting as one or the other, or what will end up happening is they actually will combine and they form a massive line. And it's really, 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 really cool to see. Now, some of you may have heard me talk about in previous lessons, this thing called a derecho. Well, a derecho can actually form from this. Now, a derecho basically is a thunderstorm that lasts for a really long time, but it moves fairly quickly. All right, now the winds usually will have to be more than 58 miles per hour, and it usually has to be a thunderstorm that covers at least 240 miles or more. There's a couple of other requirements for it, but that's pretty much the most popular uh, things for 
uh, these derechos. Now, derecho actually means in Spanish either uh, to go to continue straight or to move slightly to the right. And you'll actually see that when you when you see this diagram that's actually right here. The storm was actually right here and it started actually slightly moving right, but it continued to have this, what I like to call that little bow and arrow thing, that little bowing effect there. All right. Now, the reason why I brought this up is because I remember when I was in Columbus, uh, this was back in 2012, I was a reporter there, and one of the weather stories I'll never ever forget is the derecho that basically moved from the Midwest to the East Coast, and it caused a lot of damage. There were more than 500 reports of thunderstorms, and there were wind gusts anywhere between 80 to about 100 miles per hour. And this storm really moved very quickly. Uh, we're talking about um, several hundred miles, uh, 600 miles, I should say, uh, in a matter of 10 hours. That, that it, it was speeding. It was going about 60 miles per hour. By the time you saw it, realized what was going on, it was already over you. And it left behind a lot of damage. And the damage was largely from the straight line winds. Right. So usually when most people think of damage from these storms, they usually think of tornadoes. They usually think, OK, something will happen and then you'll just have the debris going this way and then this way and then this way. Yeah. With straight line winds, usually what you'll notice is all of the damage just looks like it's been pushed over like that. So it's usually forward. And with derechos, you basically have that happening. And on that particular day, I had that happen. It was really scary to see the entire sky go from sunny skies to very cloudy to very dark. And the winds were just absolutely insane. Look it up. All right. So with these thunderstorms, sometimes we get what we call downburst. All right. And downburst is a generic term used for either a microburst or a macroburst. All right. So microburst, if you're in the fourth grade or higher, you'll know that macro means what? Small. Whereas I should say micro means small, whereas macro means larger. Right. So a microburst basically covers damage that is about two and a half miles or smaller. All right. Now, with a microburst, you can have winds that are around 100 miles per hour. And what happens is you get those downdrafts where the wind will go from the top of the storm and it'll just rush downward very, very, very quickly. And it is a huge push of wind either near or at the ground. And you'll just notice that all of the damage looks like it was pushed outward. And this is actually an example of what a microburst actually looks like within a thunderstorm actually pretty cool to see. Uh, it usually will only last for a couple of minutes, upwards of 10 minutes at most, uh, and then it tends to dissipate. And sometimes it'll be accompanied by rain, uh, but not always. Then we have macro burst, all right? Again, it can also be referred to as a downburst as well, but with macro bursts, those actually cover the damage that was left behind by more than two and a half miles or more. So again, remember I talked about how it looked like the damage was pushed outward and yep, and you can see that right there. If this was a tornado, you would actually see the damage look like it was like a bomb went off, like it was circular. But usually with macro burst, they're usually all in one particular direction. And that's how we as meteorologists know when a storm happens, if the damage was because of a macro burst or a downburst or a tornado. Now, a macro burst, again, is just a huge push of air towards the ground at the ground level. And um, the winds can sometimes be different. And what I mean by that is usually the wind speeds, they can be a different speed. So if you're really close to the macro burst, you can have winds that are in excess of 70, 80, 90 miles per hour. But if you're maybe two, I'll say two and three quarters of a mile away, or maybe three miles away, the wind may not be as fast. You might only be 50 miles per hour, but it's still considered a macro burst. Now, these are usually found within thunderstorms, hence the reason why I bring them up. 
The last type of thunderstorm I'm going to talk about today are the absolute worst types of thunderstorms. These are thunderstorms that usually will leave behind a lot of damage and uh, they're really, 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 really dangerous. These are called supercell thunderstorms and they are really beautiful to see and look at, but not when you're actually under them. Now, supercell thunderstorms usually have updrafts of more than 100 miles per hour. They're usually responsible for the majority of tornadoes that we see, and it's all because of those really, 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 really fast winds that are shooting upwards, creating those downdrafts that also can produce hail, and yep, you guessed it, tornadoes. So we can also get flash flooding with this as well, and remember what I said about flash flooding, that basically is when you have no rain, or maybe you have a little bit of rain, and then all of a sudden you get a lot of rain, like it's just, and over a sudden you will actually get uh, some heavy rain shower. Now, this is an example of one type of supercell. Not every single supercell looks like this, uh, but this gives you just a general idea of what it looks like. Usually there's some sort of either anvil or cumulonimbus cloud. Uh, associated with the supercell. Uh, you can also get these overshooting tops, as we like to call them. Uh, sometimes I call them uh, weather or cloud brains because uh, it actually looks like it's a brain. Uh, and within here, uh, there are actually a lot of different things that are going on here. So you have your updrafts going on here. You have your downdrafts that are going on over here. Um, sometimes what will happen is you'll actually have this thing called a wall cloud that will appear uh, and it looks like literally a hand is coming out of the cloud. Uh, we call that a wall cloud. Uh, and then sometimes with supercells, you'll also get a tornado as well. Not every single time, um, but you can actually get that. And now sometimes in front of the wall cloud, you can get some rain or you can also get some hail as well. Um, so this is why, again, supercells, they are nothing to mess with, but they are really beautiful uh, to see from afar. We always get very concerned every time we see supercells. All right, so I've spoken a lot today uh, about the different types of thunderstorms today. Tomorrow, uh, we are going to be discussing lightning and how it forms, and there are actually differences within lightning. So not all lightning is actually the same. So we'll be discussing more. As always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can hit me up on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, as well as Snapchat, at Jason Fraser TV, or you can feel free to drop me an email at J-F-R-A-Z-E-R at WKYC.com. Have a wonderful day.